This is Tamara from Ooglyblog.com, and today I am making a video for Lion Brand yarn demonstrating the corner to corner stitch. I'll be using Lion Brand's Vanna's Choice. Let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to begin with a slip knot on my hook, and from there I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then I'm going to skip the first three chains, and I like to work into these bottom loops for this first square, this first section, if you will, of the pattern, but you can work under the top two loops if you prefer. But for me, I'm going to skip those three. One, two, three, come down to the fourth one, and double crochet in that chain. Again, going into whichever part of the chain you prefer, and then I will double crochet in the last two chains. So each block of the corner to corner pattern is going to be made up of a chain three and three double crochets. That's the standard corner to corner. Now, if you are working a different pattern, there may be different instructions, um, different variations on the corner to corner stitch, but this one is the basic. We've got our chain three followed by three double crochets, and that's our first block. So we'll begin the next one. I'm gonna start with a chain six again, two, three, four, five, six, and this is how we'll begin every row after this. After we've chained six, this time I'm going to go ahead and work into the, under those top two V's. I'm going to skip the first three again, go down to the fourth one, go under both loops on top this time. Working into the chain is always the hardest part, but fortunately after this row it'll only begin, well every row, it's only at the very beginning of the row that you have any chains. which I suppose is every row, but we still don't have that very, very long row of chains to work into to begin this pattern, which is nice. Now you want to make sure to get all three of these double crochets. That first chain you made, the last one we're working into right here for this square, that one can be hard to find. It can try and disappear on you. But you want to make sure you've got your three chains that you've skipped, your three double crochets, and you can see as we work back along that second chain of six there, We've come back to that first block we made, and we've got that chain three right there. That's where we want to insert our hook next. Is right. It's not. It's sort of like a chain three space. Normally, we'd skip those three and count them as a double crochet, but we want to just go right in that space now with our hook and work a slip stitch, and that pulls that second block we made up against the top of the first block we made. From there, we chain three. This is nice because this is a chain three we don't have to work back into. And then we make three more double crochets all sort of in that chain space almost that's created by that first skipped three chains. So my iron ore doesn't want to catch there. There's one and two and three. And that's our third block and the end of our first row. So you can see if I was working, say, starting in the bottom right corner, I'd be working that way. If I was in the other corner, it'd be going that way. It just depends on which one you want to make the right side or the left side or which direction you're working. But that's the second row. And from here on out, the rows are all pretty much going to work the same way. It's just a matter of how many blocks you have in each row. So to begin row three, I'll start again with a chain of six, four, five, and six. And then I will skip the first three chains go into the fourth chain, the chains don't want to cooperate with me today, but you get the idea. There's one and two, and you can see as I'm crocheting this is sort of flopping around down here. Don't worry too much about it, we'll be able to get it hooked up again in the right place as we after we finish these three double crochets. So don't worry too much about your work twisting around underneath until you're ready to crochet into it. And then it's usually pretty easy to get it straightened out. So we've got that last one right there. Whoops. Go under both those loops. And that sets us up, you can see, just by working into that last chain, that's pulled this right to where I need it to be. So I can find, this is the next block, you can see I'm coming up to it. We want to find that chain three that we made at the beginning there, and go right back into there with that slip stitch to connect our blocks. 
like so. From there, we chain three and work three double crochets into that same chain three space. Let me just pull up a little bit more yarn here. There we go. So I'm gonna make three more double crochets right in that chain space right there. Again, this is a little different, and it, that's why it can be confusing. We don't normally work around a double crochet like this unless we're working some sort of border or something, but in this pattern, that's where you put those stitches. So we've got our chain three and our three double crochets, so that block's done. So we come down here to the last one and work right there. Go into that chain three space and make our slip stitch. Oops. There we are. And then same thing. Start with a chain three, one, two, and three, and then three double crochets into that chain three space. And of course, because since this is the last one, we don't have anything to slip stitch to. We'll take a look at what I've got here, and then we'll zoom out and do one more row together before we start our decreases. So that is our third row. And you can see in our first row, we had one block, in our second row, two blocks. In our third row, three blocks. So you can see how easy it is to count your rows with this pattern. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can begin the next row. So let's begin row four. Once again, I'm going to start with a chain of six. And then I'm going to skip three. One, two, three. Double crochet in the next one. There we go. One double crochet there. Let's go down to the next one. Make our double crochet there. And then our final double crochet for our first block here. And again, by going under those top two loops there, it's always going to pull that next block right to where you need it. So that's a good tip for this pattern. Oops. There we go. So that's the first block of row four. We find the one that it's trying to hook up to, that it really wants to connect to. Right there, make our slip stitch. Chain three again. Three double crochets right in that chain three. And you'll see I like to move my non-hook fingers up along my stitches as I make them like this. And I know that can make it a little harder to see through. I try not to do it on videos, but I will say, if you might want to give it a try, if you don't do that, it helps make your stitches just a little bit more even, I find, as I crochet. So there's just a little side note. And then, of course, you just keep going attached to that block in that chain three space chain three again, you know what you'll do with that later now, and work those three double crochets around that double crochet stitch, or excuse me, around the chain three. So we come to the end of row four. We've got one more block to make here. Go ahead and slip stitch there, chain three, and then double crochet three times around that last chain three. Now, depending on the project you're making or if you're following a pattern, Obviously, you'll have different numbers of rows, different colors you'll be using, all sorts of different things that can make each pattern unique. But for a simple square like we're making here, you can see we're working from corner to corner, depending on which direction you want to go. But as we have the width, say, of our project that we want, we want to be able to work even on one side without increasing while still increasing on the other. If you, So that would give you... For instance, if I kept increasing on this side, this side would keep getting taller, but this side, if I didn't increase, would stay straight. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this row will be all the same until I get to the end. So here I am at the end, almost, 
of the fifth row, I've got my four new blocks, one, two, three, four, and up till now, normally, I would slip stitch in here and make another block here. But I don't want to keep increasing on this side. I want this to start being a straight edge right here. So what I'm going to do instead is slip stitch into that chain three space like so and then right away I'm just going to go ahead and turn. I'm going to slip stitch into the three double crochets I just made. One, two, and three like so. Then I'm back at that chain three I just made so I'll slip stitch in there and as I turn, you can see I can just start working back the other way. So that gives me a nice straight edge here, but lets me keep increasing there. So let's say this was going to be like a blanket or a towel. I would have this width, but my length would keep increasing. So now let's say I wanted to treat this side the same way I treated this side and start decreasing on both, if you will, so I can finish out my rectangle. Let me show you how we would do that. I'm going to begin right here. Since I don't want to come out this way, I'm just going to chain three. One, two, three. That maintains our straight edge along here. And work my three double crochets right there. One, two, and <laughs> one more, three. There we go. And then I will go ahead and connect to this next one over here. You can see that's how I treat and maintain that straight side there. So I'm only going to have two more blocks here and you can see that I'm going to fill in this space right here, this corner right here, and then this corner right here, but I don't want to put another one right here because we're closing in that side too. So from here I'll chain three, one, two, three, three double crochets in here, and honestly, I think the second half of corner to corner patterns are the most fun because that's when you're not changing six and working into those fiddly chains anymore. You're able to start just whipping right along. It's only on the increase rows that you're going to have those six chains that you have to deal with. So I'm making my last block here because I know I don't want to put another one on top of this one because that would keep increasing. So one more. And I join in that same chain three space. Find the chain three on the end there to make your slip stitch. And then that's it for that row. So I've got my straight edge happening here. You can see where our next two blocks are going to be. So let's head back that direction. I will turn. I'm going to slip stitch in the three stitches I just made. One, two, three. Slip stitch in that chain three space. And then just start right off with a chain three. One, two, three. Three double crochets right around that chain three. One, two, three. Then I bring it over to the next block here. Slip stitch in that chain three space. You can see. And it's okay to tug on your stitches a little bit. Spread them out over that chain three. We're maintaining our straight side here. So I start my last block of this row, a chain three, and double crochet three times right into that chain three space. One, whoops, and two, and three. Then I join to that chain three space. And again, I don't want to increase because I've got a straight line here that I'm trying to maintain. So I turn and slip stitch in those three chains I just made, or excuse me, the three double crochets I just made. One, two, and three, like so. Then into that chain three space. And you can see on our rectangle, there's just one little square there left, one final corner. So that's what we're making now. I'll chain three, one, two, three, put my three double crochets right in that chain space, one, two, and three. Maybe give them a little tug to spread them out a little bit. And then when I slip stitch, 
subtract that square there, you can see that's it. The edges can be a little wobbly. This pattern, this sort of stitch pattern does benefit, I think, from a border, but it's obviously optional. It's whatever you prefer. But that is the basics of the corner to corner stitch. I hope this video helps you explore all the wonderful patterns out that are out there using this stitch, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks so much. Thank you.